Hey y'all, good night. Hey, it's Tammy with Real Southern Woman. It is about 6.53 here, Eastern Time, in Georgia. We have just had our dinner. The apple dumplings just came out of the oven. And so they're cooling down. And I'm going to talk to you while they're cooling because after I eat one, I am going to lay down. Well, not lay down, but get on my recliner and rest. It is so good to see everybody. Hey, Patricia. Um... I have looked at our lesson today. It's a good lesson. Last night we went to church, so I wasn't here. <clears throat> today is February the 28th, and our lesson is called Success Through the Spirit. It says, We have received the Spirit who is from God so that we may know the things freely given to us by God. And that comes out of 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 12. And... Uh, he also is referencing out of Proverbs chapter 16, verse 3. It says, commit your actions to the Lord and your plans will succeed. This may seem difficult to believe if the tasks you face today are especially challenging. You want God to guide and empower you, but how can you be certain he will? You can be confident because you, sorry, you can be confident because when you accept Jesus as your Savior, He sent His Spirit to indwell in you. That comes out of Ephesians chapter 1, verses 13 and 14. It says, The Holy Spirit of all the all-knowing, all-powerful, so sovereign God lives within you to carry out all of His purposes through you. Though the challenges you face today may be tough to you, they are nothing to Him. And He invites you to seek Him and trust your future to Him. And obey Him so He can demonstrate His awesome power and wisdom to you. Things may not turn out as you expect, but they will ultimately work together for your good. So do not deny your loving Savior. Rather, claim the promise of Proverbs 16, verse 3, and surrender your day to him. He will guide you, give you strength, and prompt you in the way you should go. He says, um, at the end, he says, Jesus, thank you for leading me to triumph. Make me sensitive to your spirit and help me obey you in all things. Um, I just read the Bible study from the other book, and it was talking about how God knows everything about us and how we should never be scared of evil because he's conquered evil. He knows all about evil and he knows things are going to happen to us before we even know they're going to happen to us. And he knows um, he's just an all knowing God. And that's what gives us faith and keeps us um, encouraged through hard times. Because we know he's always there. He is always there. No matter where we are, we may not be thinking on him and we may not be in a place we ought to be, but he is there. Because why? Because if you are saved, he put his Holy Spirit within your heart and that Holy Spirit is with you, which is part God, the Trinity. Everywhere you go. So, if you decide that, this is one thing I also talk about, is uh, if you decide that you can dress yourself up on the outside and pretend uh, that everything's okay, the Holy Spirit knows exactly what's going on on the inside of you, Okay. He also knows uh, your needs and your wants. He knows your hurts and your heartaches. And he's there. Um, and if we acknowledge that he's there and give him more of our time and listen to God, then, and his Holy Spirit that prompts us, then we'll live a bigger and a more abundant life. The preacher was actually talking last night about that. He was uh, preaching out of, um, let me try to remember.
Genesis, um, when Jacob had his son, um, when Jacob, which was later called Isaac, he was about to die, and his son came so he could bless his grandsons. And uh, the preacher was talking about how, um, now I've lost my train of thought, I got to think. He was talking about Lord, you know what happens when you get old? You just have a great thought and you have a, have a remembrance and then it just goes away. Now, wait a minute. I'm going to think of it. I might just flip over there. Genesis. It was in chapter 32, I believe. What? 28? I think 28 is when he got in the um, dream. Wait a minute, y'all. Just bear with me. Jacob wrestles with God in Genesis 32. And in, in Genesis uh, 38, anyway, what was the main point of the sermon so I'll know what I'm talking about? Oh, I know what I was going to say. When he takes... Um, his sons to his daddy for his daddy to bless them. His daddy remembers Isaac. Yeah. I thought Jacob became Isaac. Oh, I meant Israel. Okay. Y'all, the Lord of mercy. Jacob changes his name to Israel in this text. God changes his name because he wrestled with God. God won and he changed his name to Israel. Well, his son, Jacob, comes to him because he's about to pass away so that he can bless his children. One thing that Jacob um, was, I mean, one thing that Israel did, we'll call him Israel, is that he remembered the time that God made him promises, and he remembered the good times, he remembered the blessings, and he remembered God telling him what he was going to do for him. And so, um, he shares the information with his son and his grandkids, and he blesses the grandboys, okay? But what the point of the sermon was last night was that when the Holy Spirit because we have lots of things in our lives that we can recall when God did something good for us. When God showed out in our life. And he said that we shouldn't keep that to ourselves. That we should never just uh, keep all the blessings that God has blessed us with to ourselves and not tell other people. Because he said that, uh, that salvation could come through. Uh, someone telling their salvation story. And then he gave us an example of a boy that he was talking to at the ball field, a, a grown man, and the grown man came up to him and he shared his salvation story with him and he told him that he was 28 years old. And when he was 28 years old, he thought that he was tough and could just do anything. And this man came up to him and told him the story of how God got a hold to him and how blessed he had been and how his life was different and just how, you know, how happy he was. And when he told that 28 boy, that 28 year old boy that it broke his heart, it humbled him. And he said, I want what you have. Can you tell me how to be saved? 
So lots of times we have things in our lives and we have experiences in our lives and we should share them because it can help somebody. So I just thought I'd give you that note too today. Um, so share some stuff. It might be something bad, but something could come out of it. It may be a storm that, that you got through because of your faith and and then God blessed you at the end like he did Job in the Bible. So um, let's not hide our light. I tell y'all that. Let's not take our little light that shines and put it in the closet. Let's keep it shining, okay? Um, I th I'm going to say my prayers, then I'm going to let y'all look at my pretty apple dumplings. And then we'll sign off. Um, I hope you've enjoyed tonight's fall study. It was very simple. I kind of wanted to read, if y'all don't mind. I know there's only nine left, but I kind of wanted to read Ephesians 1, 13 and 14. Um, my phone's kind of going black. It's about dead. I'm going to try to read this before y'all hang up. Ephesians uh, 1. Because this talks about the Holy Spirit who comes to dwell in us. And without Him, our lives would just be so different. It says, um, In whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestined according to the purpose of Him who worketh all things after the counsel of His own will, that we should, to the praise of His glory, who first trusted in Christ, in whom ye all trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. So he's letting us know about that beautiful Holy Spirit how we're sealed by it, and uh, praise the Lord for it. So um, we're going to say our prayers, and we're going to sign off because I think my phone's about to die. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you so, so, so very much um, for your Holy Spirit. I don't know what we would do without it, and many of us, we fail, and, and we sin every day, even with the Holy Spirit living inside of us. I can't imagine what it would have been like to live back in the Old Testament before you came and shown the world your love and gave us your Holy Spirit. Um, I'm so very blessed to be here during this age of grace, and I thank you for that. Uh, be with all the ones who are watching. Please comfort those who are hurting and sick. And we will uh, hope to love and see you tomorrow here on Real Southern Woman. Um, in Christ's name we pray. Amen. All right, we're going to see if this lasts long enough to for y'all to see the dumplings. It's on, it's on power save mode. I guess y'all can see. Let's see. I got to find the thing that flips the camera around, y'all. Okay. I guess y'all can see. There's that yummy apple. I think I'm going to eat it. And then, here's the yummy dumplings. They look so good. Good, good. So anyway, we're about to eat one. We'll catch y'all later. Love ya. Bye.